Tennessee Homestead. I decided to make this early today. It's not even light outside yet. Anyway, <laughs> I hope uh, you had a great weekend and uh, that you're getting ready to work on a super week. And uh, it's uh, a lot of fun. I spent I spent most of my weekend reading. Yeah, I heard that out there. Yes, I can read. Hurt my feelings here now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> picked up a few interesting things. I thought it was kind of cute. Uh, I bet you don't know that probably in your lifetime you've actually sensed bacteria talking. Huh? They talk to each other. A uh, research uh, group out of the Netherlands had been looking at a another bacteria that's kind of a predator uh, to other bacteria. Uh, call, I think they called it a protist or something like that, a P-R-O-T-I-S-T. Not protest. We have enough of those. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, they were trying to figure out how this thing could not only find other bacteria, but also uh, distinguish between different types of bacteria and so forth. And what they finally discovered was smell. Bacteria, when they communicate with one another, do it by releasing smells. <laughs> wow. Uh, and they, they said that, like, in, if you're in the forest and, um, you know, it's just rained or something and you get that strong odor of uh, rotting wood, okay? Well, that's actually smells being given off by the bacteria that's deteriorating that wood. Uh, same thing with, like, leaves. If you turn them over and they're starting to compost on the bottom, you get that smell. That's what's from. It's from the bacteria. Okay. <laughs> See, now you've had an enlightened moment. The first of the first start of the week. Isn't that cool? Uh, so, uh, but we're gonna keep enlightening you. There were some other things uh, that I was reading about that just made you shake your head and, and go, really? Uh, there's a, a grass. Actually, it's a weed called bent grass. They've been using it in. Uh, golf courses for years and it's spread all over the country now uh it's it's a weed uh but it looks like grass until it gets way tall uh but if you try to pull it up you'll find it's got these interconnecting root structures to where you can you know it, it just every little spot where there's a plant it puts down new roots and also sends off uh these feelers and starts another plant uh, it's it's very tough to destroy uh, the natural one. Uh, you either got to pull up all those roots because if you don't get it all up, yeah, all of a sudden you're going to see a little green sprout because it's very quick to re-sprout and uh, you know get the photosynthesis going again so it can continue to spread. Very invasive stuff. <coughs> spread out pretty much all over the country. Uh, anyway. You know, courtesy of golf courses, so the rich guys can go bat a ball around. Uh, but yeah, it's it's used in a lot in golf courses because it is, you can mow it very close to the ground, even in extremely hot temperatures, and it won't kill it. Uh, you can, you know, run a herd of golfers through it, and uh, them walking on it and so forth won't damage it. Uh, things of this nature, very hardy plant, okay, as most weeds seem to be. Uh <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Uh, well, let somebody develop a you know a food plant that you can stomp into the mud and it'll be back the next day, and there you'd have something. Uh, but anyway, they've had a uh, interesting thing going on. Is Scott the you know the guys give you like Scott's turf builder and all that? Uh, decided to get in bed with Mother Monsanto. Yeah, yeah. And they were going to come up with a better dent grass for the golf courses. Noble cause, dumb stunt. Um, you know, trying to improve the golf courses, they didn't realize and should have realized. I mean, when I first kind of saw the article, I went, that stuff's going to get all over the place. And that's going to be a problem. Uh, see, because right now you deal with bent grass by either pulling up all the root 
uh, which is tough to do. Or uh, landscapers and so forth that are dealing with bent grass in your yard will come out there with some uh, glyphosate-based herbicide. Hose the area down real good, it'll kill everything. You know, it was a big spot of dirt out there. <clears throat> but then they can come back and reseed and uh, start again. Because, you know, yards and golf courses aren't using herbicides to such a level that it's going to be a buildup issue. So it's going to disappear down into the ground. They can plant new seed. There you go. So that's how they deal with eradicating natural bent grass. Well, when these kids decided to start coming up with the new improved genetically modified version of bent grass, uh, they did it in a couple of countries. And uh, one was also uh, in Oregon, one of their little sanctuaries, as they'd say. Uh, and uh, in 2007, I think it was, that uh, they got fined by the uh, USDA for improper procedures on this test plot and got fined like half a million dollars. So apparently it was a serious whoops. Uh, but now, you know, God love us. A uh, decade later, we have, our federal government has had to uh, step in and protect Scott and Monsanto against any liability from this new improved bit grass. And they've done that. Uh, they've set it up to where they can't be held liable. Because <sighs> Monsanto and Scotts went to the government and said, here's, here's a big old stack of money, and we're not going to try to market this at all, nowhere. And we relinquish all claims to it. Is anything like Dr. Frankenstein going, not my monster man. <laughs> it's your baby now. And our government bought into this nonsense and has protected Monsanto and Scott from being sued uh, over uh, conditions and, and problems caused by this bent grass. Gee. Well, now they found out the bent grass, uh, a couple of things about it that aren't in natural grass. Natural grass, it'll, uh, the natural bent grass will kind of get into your yard and pop up everywhere and eventually starts crowding out the uh, native grasses. Uh, where this new stuff is uh, actually pretty aggressive, it literally will kill the grass and take its place. Uh, second thing is it's uh, a weed, uh, and the natural weed was invasive. I mean, it really was. Uh, that's how we have it all over the country, just from the golf courses. But this stuff is uh, extremely, extremely invasive. It uh, has very fine pollen that moves well in rainwater. And, uh, and in the air, it can blow for, you know, a heck of a long distance because it's almost like powder. So this thing spread. Uh, let me double check the name of this place. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah. So, it got off the reservation, moved down the irrigation ditches into creeks, and has moved into the Crooked River Na National Grassland. Yeah. That's one of those kind of places to where if you went out there and plucked a plant, there'd be two black helicopters fly in with SWAT team and you'll be on your way to prison. Somehow, uh, this grass has now invaded uh, this grassland and other places. <laughs> it's like, it's spreading pretty fast. Here's some of the problems they're finding with it. The EPA stepped up, but God love them. You know, the EPA looks out for us. I mean, they really and the EPA got, it's just grass. And now it never has been grass. It's always been a weed. And uh, it's uh, pretty invasive and 
could create problems. So Monsanto and Scotts decided they were going to destroy their test plot. Having a problem doing that. One, because it is a genetically modified organism, and they put into it to where the golf courses could use Roundup on it. Uh, they don't have any herbicide that can kill it. All right. So they, somebody came up with a brainstorm of, well, you know, like in a forest fire, if you build up a bed of flammables and get it hot enough on the soil, it'll kill the root structure. Nice thought. Apparently it didn't work, but it was a nice thought. Uh, they had built fires hot enough to destroy a full-grown tree's root structure, and this stuff somehow managed to survive it. So fire didn't work. Uh, and it's coming at us. It's uh, continuing to spread. Now, here's another little perk to this stuff. They have found, by studying what's going on out there in that grassland, wildlife won't eat it. So as it spreads, wildlife withdraws. You got it. Deer won't eat it. Rabbits won't eat it. And they're leaving the areas where this takes hold. Um, what happens when that reaches America's pasture land, folks? Will cows eat it? Probably not. Because you'll find cows and, and deer, for the most part, they enjoy the same foods. So if a deer won't eat it, the cows won't eat it, and it hits our pastures, we have a problem. Uh, one, hay production will drop dramatically because nobody will be cutting hay because you won't be able to sell it because no grazing animal is going to eat it. That's going to be a problem. Uh, you're not going to be able to cut hay for your own animals through the winter because, same reason, they're not going to eat it. Why spend a decent out there doing it? Um, so on and so on. It could end up ruining the uh, livelihoods of people who make their living selling livestock. Uh, because, one, they kind of know you guys aren't going to pay $100 for a hamburger. Uh, and that's what it could do to, to prices if you had to feed a calf from weaning straight on through to uh, butchering. Be a very, very, very expensive animal. So, you know, you got to look at that. And then you have the organic farmer who is just going to have a major problem with this stuff because it is designed to not to die. Okay? So it's going to be in your crops and going to make it harder to keep, to even farm organically. But, like I said, the government has protected it. The USDA had stepped up, and now uh, they can't be held liable for the monster they turn loose. They turn monsters loose a lot. We had the Starlight program of corn uh, is still hurting our corn markets. Um, here again, experimental GMO crop got off the reservation, and off it went. Got mixed into general corn, game over. They say, we weren't doing any genetic modification of wheat, but yet they started having wheat that it was Roundup resistant show up in fields. So apparently somebody is telling the story. Uh, but if you look at all this, it's just another added nail to the coffin of agriculture, um, and it's going to be a problem to you. Um, <laughs> it's any grazing animal, if, you know, if they have to be fed from weaning on, all with feeds and so forth, you're not going to be able to afford them. It's just that simple. Uh, you know, that hamburger now is going to cost you a hundred bucks instead of, instead of a few bucks it does today. So be advised, this stuff's out there. It is coming at you. Uh, it is continuing to grow and spread. And it will be a future headache. So my advice to you, 
I, I, you know, while most of my subscribers are pretty much awake and understand what's going on, the simple fact is, is that we got to get these people stopped. You know, they're creating monsters and just setting them loose on us and uh, with no fixes. So, you know, they're, they're doing the same thing with microbial life, bacteria and so forth in the soil and their seed coatings to protect the plants. Um, what's that stuff doing out there? Is it mutating? Is this, uh, you know, an ongoing problem? Yeah, it is. So, with all that being said, you need to wake up, folks. Uh, you got to get out of the grocery stores. You have to. Because these people, they are involved knee-deep in uh, Agenda 21 and the sustainability uh, stuff of the UN. <clears throat> it's not going to be good for us. It's going to enslave us. And they are pushing for all they're worth and still pushing. Folks need to wise up and get busy and uh, get this stopped before you can't stop it. Okay? It's like a, a car rolling down the hill. It just keeps picking up speed. And if you don't have any brakes on it, you're going to crash into something. So, you know, you need to worry about the, a little bit of is my convenience worth running the risk of being enslaved. And uh, once you can do that, it'll pretty much put you on the right track. Another thing, you know, and a lot of folks probably even mumbled under their breath, oh, Donald Trump will take care of us. Yeah, well, let's give it a second look. If it gets too dry, I start coughing and I'm trying not to do that. Uh, he just recently picked the head of the American uh, Manufacturers Association uh, that you know, kind of raised some eyebrows. Uh, not so much, and that's what I find humorous, not so much with the liberals out there who have been raising eyebrows and jumping up and down and screaming and threatening a revolution and you know, you name it. But uh, when you look at his credentials, for him to be ahead of one of our major uh, consulting groups for uh, manufacturing business, you, you kind of go, really? Is that the best we could come up with? Now, is it possible that this guy has personal beliefs different from the company that he worked for? Uh, and uh, he had to do things he did when he worked for him because of who he worked for? It's possible. Possible. Uh, but the facts are is this man has been the CEO of uh, Dow Chemical for quite some time and whether or not whether or not um, his positions on stuff like NAFTA that they help push through and things of this nature the, the amount of pollution they've been dumping down in southern Mexico Toxic waste that literally have been going into some of the rivers. That's not good. But uh, we'll see. It's one fellow to keep your eyeball on. Uh, makes you wonder what they're up to. You know how how serious they are about uh, getting this fixed. So that's my stance on that. Stand back and watch. Uh, see what's going on. Uh, the rest of the screaming liberals uh, that we got running around out there, they just need to sit down and shut up. Give the man a chance. Okay? Um, and hopefully he'll do good. He's been working hard. Let's hope he continues this particular appointment that he made. Doesn't look good. Uh, it'll look bad. But he may have an inside track we don't. But we warrant closely watching uh, what they're doing. So, that's about, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't forget this. Uh, we're coming up on a thousand members, and when we do, 
<laughs> make that big thousand member, uh, I'm going to do a giveaway. And uh, I was thinking about giving away a year subscription to a um, magazine that is based on uh, organic uh, practices and principles for uh, farming. And it's got a lot of a lot of other articles in it. It is a bit of a tree hugger kind of magazine. <laughs> and don't, don't tell them that I do not agree with climate change. Okay, they'll burn my subscription. Uh, <laughs> a lot of that, but there's also a lot of good information. Okay, and that's what you gotta. That's that's true with anything. You gotta glean the good information, and they do have quite a bit of good information. Uh, and a lot of techniques of setting up CSAs and different things of that nature that have been proven successful. So that was what I was thinking about. Uh, or, you know, something like a gift card to a farm and ranch store where you can just go get what you want. Uh, something of that nature. Uh, drop some comments down there. Let me know what you think. Uh, I, I am not rich by any stretch other than in name, so it won't be a... A massive thing, but uh, I'm kind of looking to celebrate uh, when we cross that, that uh, thousand threshold. So anyway, think about some of this stuff, folks. It's time to we really get serious about uh, cutting off these people's money uh, while we can. Uh, if you haven't watched the entire GMO series, you need to do that. There's a plan out there. They're following that plan. And if they ever get to the end of it, before we get them stopped, We're done. You know, it's going to be like tag, game over. So think about it. Let me know what you think of the idea. It's it's really a good uh, organic uh, farming magazine. It really is. Um, it has a, a wide variety variety of topics that they cover, uh, from regulations, laws, things of this nature, and. Uh, Different organizations is what I like using it for because it has a lot of contact information for uh, different groups where you can get more information from them. But uh, it's it's a pretty good read. Okay, so this is Rich Jesse Homestead. Hope you're going to have a just a tremendous week. Uh, take to heart what I said. Go out and take a look at it. Um, it's kind of interesting. You guys have a wonderful week. We'll talk to you later.